that without very high morale, there could be no, no progress and no achievement could be attained. I think, as, as most of you know, Harry O'Neill worked very closely with my father at Lord Manning for many, many years, and we will hear from him in just a few short moments. But uh, to continue the program for this evening, I would, at this point, like to introduce to you... I, I'm sorry, I, I would like to introduce to you... What is going on? Why not? Well, can you imagine what these people think of me? 
Yeah, they think you're Victor Lord's daughter. Yeah, Victor Lord's illegitimate daughter who would do something terrible to that nice lady up there in front of all her friends and her family. Well, all of a sudden, she's a nice lady? Look, I'm not saying that that is my opinion, all right, but 90% of these people here think she's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Now, I might as well be the Grinch who killed Christmas for all they care. No matter how much I say I didn't do it, they're not going to believe me. Or will they? You mean you didn't do it? Of course not. Haven't you been listening? Well, who do you think did that? The one person in this room really hates Vicky and had access to that letter. And who would that be? The woman who now calls herself Dorian Lord. I'm just so devastated that it all had to come out this way. Yes, I'm sure it's very uncomfortable for you. Oh, no, no, no. For me, I can roll with the punches. It's common knowledge that Victor had an eye for the ladies before he met me. Oh, it's just all of this just seems so avoidable. Avoidable? Well, how can you say that and also say she's fighting for her so-called birthright? Not so-called, Harry. I mean, we have the letter verified and it's been authenticated as Victor's handwriting. But does Vicky concede that? No, no, she cannot deal with the reality of the situation. And therein lies the problem. If, if she had just recognized the relationship when the letter first came to light, complied with her father's wishes, none of this would have happened. And you're sure that Tina's the one who's responsible for distributing the letter? <laughs> Who else? You seem to think she could be so cruel to Vicky. Please, Harry, Vicky has not exactly been this sweetness in life to Tina. Poor like Tina's feel... been treated like a poor relation from the very beginning. Sound like you feel sorry for Tina. But I do. Well, what about that lady over there? She's not exactly having a barrel of fun. But Harry, that's the point I'm trying to make. Vicky brought this situation upon herself. It's true. She didn't have to behave that way, not for a minute. Well, uh, you think they'll go on with the program? I don't know. Mm. I'll never run out on her, but I gotta duck out to call my office. Oh. I'll go along with you. Oh, very good. See you later. Yes. Oh, I think I gotta get going. Can I drop you off? No. Dorian, I didn't plant the letter. It's just, Harry, you're making it seem as though Vicky is a victim here. Oh, I see. I can't be your friend and Vicky's friend. Is that the name of the game? Oh. Okay. So be it. Where are you going? Howie, come. <clears throat> Where's Harry going? Home. Without you? Yes. I told him that I wanted to stay. I want to do anything I can for Vicky. By the way, did you notice that uh, Rob has come with another girl? Go. Oh. Joy and Robert friends, that's all. Mm. Kathy didn't happen to say what this was all about, did she? What? No, she said that she and Rob had a fight. She didn't want to discuss it. I have a question for you. Yes, what? Tina told me that uh, you had that letter examined by a handwriting expert. Yes. Well, I did. A man named Macaulay. His credentials are impeccable. No doubt. But my point is that you had access to the letter. Yes, Tina gave me a copy of it. From which you could have had more copies made. Are you implying that I put... Well, did you? No, of course I did not. And in case you have any idea of making a statement like that in public, let me tell you something. You'll be very sorry if you do. You're a lawyer. I don't need to spell it out for you, do I? Strange. I was just about to say the same thing to you. Oh, come on, Dorian. Why would I do that? Because you're the only one who has anything to gain from it. What? You don't have anything to gain from all this? No. What would I have to gain from it? Oh, what about satisfaction, hon? What about vengeance against your arch nemesis, Victoria Lord Buchanan? Vengeance like you could never even imagine. You liar. Oh, yeah. One of us is lying, Dorian. I think we know which one that is, don't we? Oh, please, please, make him stop. If the shoe fits, you little tramp. If you don't shut your mouth, I'll tell you what. Hold, 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 please. Laurel. 
to stand on a break or something? Not at all. You got a request? Oh, anything dancing. And you encourage him to dance. Okay, you? you got it. You got it. <sighs> Do you realize what you're doing? Yes. I mean, what about her? Have you asked her why she did what she did? We'll get to that later. Now isn't the time or the place. Why not? Because it will only make things worse for my wife, and she doesn't deserve it. Yeah, well, that's a matter of opinion. Are you saying that uh, you're responsible for the letter? No, what she's saying is that none of this would have happened if Vicky had just dealt with the situation correctly. Thank oh. you, Dorian. That's exactly what I was saying. Don't thank me, Tina. I still think you're lying. Yeah, well, I don't give a hoot what you think. Clyde, would you please just let me talk to her? No. What? Why not? Believe me, I didn't have anything to do with this. I, oh, the unmitigated gall. But I swear to you, please, I would not have put that in the program. Believe me, I gave Vicky my word. <laughs> and we all know what that's worth. Listen to her, please. No. Why not? It'd just make things worse for my wife. Look, don't I even get a chance to defend myself? You'll get your day in court. I promise you that. Oh, I can hardly wait. Why don't I see if I can get you a photograph? I can call the house doctor. No, 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 no. Why not? Because I, I have to get myself together. Where are the children? Where are Kevin and Joey? Vicky, Where are they? They came and told you goodnight, remember? Yes, Kim took them home. I thought that would be best. Oh, I, I, I remember that now, yes. And I think it would be best for you to go home, too. Laurel, uh, can you uh, have Vicky's car brought around? Sure. No! Oh, I'm not going anywhere. That would be quitting. That would be running away. My father wouldn't want me to do that. You want to go on with the girlfriend? Yes, I do. That's above and beyond the call. No one here expects you to. I expect that of myself, and I owe it to my father. I have to explain to everybody that that letter is a forgery. Is it? Are you sure, Vicky? Of course I'm sure. I am. I had to check my handwriting expert. You mean you knew about this before this evening? Yes. Tina has been blackmailing me with it for weeks. Clint knows all about it. Tell him, Clint, tell him. Sweetheart, how are you feeling? I'm fine. I think maybe, um, you ought to take her home. Hmm? I couldn't agree more. No, no, I cannot go home, please. Please, I have to explain to everybody, and I don't let anybody leave until I have explained it all to them, please. Sweetheart, please listen to me. No, Laurel, do you have a little place just where I could go and sit quietly for a few minutes and coll collect my thoughts? That's, that's all I want. Is there sweet, or, or, or there's, a, there's an alcove right out in the lobby. I can see that you're not disturbed Thank there. Is you. that okay? Please, take me there. Only somebody has to make an announcement of some sort. To, to, to make sure that... No, darling, you can make it. I need you with me. Please, I need you to help me decide what to say. Uh, Clint, I'll, um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Thank you, Jenny. Just just tell them to stay, and I'll be back. That's fine. No, I'll, I'll tell everybody to stay, okay? Thank you. Come on. Let's step out the kitchen door. That way you won't have to fight to your crowd. Thank you. Could you, could you turn on the mic? Ladies and gentlemen, excuse me. If I could have your attention, please. <clears throat> uh, Mrs. Buchanan has asked me to uh, tell you that she's very sorry uh, for the uh, interruption in tonight's program. And uh, she asked you to be very patient, maybe finish your coffee and... Um, Enjoy a little dancing, and above all, please don't leave. Uh, the program will continue momentarily, at which point uh, Mrs. Buchanan, I think, would like to make a statement. Thank you very much. Jerry, where's Vicky gone? Uh, why do you want to know? Because I have to talk to her. I have to explain something to her. Listen, uh, do you know what she's going to say when she comes back here? No, I don't have any idea. Mm -hmm. I can't stand it. What? She won't even look at me. She'll get over it. Yeah, but I just want to talk to her. I want to make her understand. What are you going to say to her? I just don't want her thinking that. I'll be right back. Is the seat taken? Cassie, I want to talk to you. You've got to understand. Really going on. I, I understand exactly what's going on. I break up with Rob, and you pick him up. Well, no, no, I didn't pick him up. So 
so. What were you doing with them all evening? Well, he asked me. You didn't have to accept. Well, no, but he said that he was going to go with some strange girl. You didn't even know I thought that you'd much prefer. It, 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 it don't do me any favors. Well, what, 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 what are you doing here with him? What are you... <sighs> you tell me. And another thing. You better find yourself another roommate, because I'm moving out. So what do you think? What do you think about what? About the alleged letter from the great man, the whole flower. I don't know. I'm not even thinking about it. Things rough in that direction. Yeah, they're rough. They're very rough. She took it hard? Yeah, she took it hard. What'd you expect? And you're kicking yourself. I'm kicking myself, yes? Put it mildly, I'm kicking myself. What else could you do under the circumstances? I could kill Dorian. And then you'd be on the run like your father. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. You don't have to explain it to me. <coughs> Keep your resolve. I resolve. Well, think of something. Like what? Excuse me, Rob. Can we go home now? What's the matter? What'd she say to you? I'm All right, come on, let's go. Talk to you. Okay. She's getting there. What, is, is there anything that I can do to help? No, I don't think so. Thanks with her. I have him sealed off in the corner of the lobby. Well, Jenny just, just made a little speech, and she said that Vicky was going to come back, and she was going to make some kind of statement. Is she going to be able to do that? But uh, you've known her longer than I have. What do you think? Well, ordinarily, I can say that, say that Vicky can do anything that she set her mind to. But she seemed to be absolutely destroyed. Whoever did this really hit her where it hurts the most. That Tina Clayton worked for me once, you know. Yeah, I recall that. I was real lucky to get rid of her. You know, there's one thing I hate as a two-faced woman. You know, she'd come on sweet and batter those eyelashes, but underneath, she was a schemer and a vicious girl. Excuse me, I said she might do. Oh, Sonny, uh... I was just thinking to myself, a refined young lady like you can't be accustomed to these kinds of goings on. Asa, I think you have me all wrong. Do you think that you and I could have a talk? Well, sure. You can go to my place. I'll buy you a nightcap, yes, sir. You know, that sounds mighty inviting, but I think that we need to settle this matter right here. You know, Asa, I cannot believe you have not recognized me. Maybe I should feel insulted. But when you didn't realize who I was, I told you a fib. See, back home, they did used to call me Sonny and everything, but that's not my real name. Don't you recognize the face that has kissed you? This is Clover. I am Jesse's... I'm Jesse's sister. Oh. You feel better? A little bit better. How about I recommend our next move? Oh, I wish you would. Okay. I'm going to take you out to the car. I'm going to have the driver take you. No. Home. Honey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me finish. I'm going to take you out to the car, and I'm going to have the driver take you home. Then I will go back into the ballroom, and I will make an announcement to the effect that this letter that your father supposedly wrote is probably a fraud, and that we are investigating it. Okay? But that in any event, your father was a tremendous achiever, and the banner is his most fitting and most eloquent and significant memorial. Most lovely. I couldn't have said it better myself. Let's take you out to the car and get you home. You can get some rest. No, wait. Wait. If you wouldn't mind, I would like to go out there and say that myself. Sweetheart, let me do it for you. No, no. And for a number of reasons. I don't want you fighting my battles for me. I'm volunteering. I know you are. I know you are, and I love you very much for that. But this is something that I have to do for myself. Why? To prove to yourself how strong you are. 
No. But I have to prove to my father that I'm worthy to be his daughter. Your father is not around anymore. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, Clint. I walked into the ballroom tonight, and I could feel his presence everywhere. It was such a palpable thing. And I... I really feel he would never forgive me if I didn't measure up to this challenge. What can I say? Just say you'll be with me, please. And say that you'll stand by me when I go in. Oh, you know I'm always with you. And you know I'll always stand beside you. Don't you know that by now? I do it. Nice to hear it. Shed for one evening. I gotta wait for Vicky. You think she's gonna come back? Well, she said she would. Yeah, I know, but considering the circumstances, uh... No, believe me, I know her a lot better than you. She'll be back. You want to bet? Come on, let's get out of here. Come up to my place and have a nice, quiet drink. Your place? Yeah, I'm staying here at the end. Come on. I can tell you're upset. Didn't I always know how to relax you? Hmm? Okay, you do what you want to. You want to stay, stay. Can I see you tomorrow? I don't know. All right. You call me when you make up your mind. I'm going to be out of the hotel all day tomorrow, but you can reach me at this point. Good, I'm glad that you stayed. Just come on, Mitch. She's going to tell her what you did. Oh, are you kidding me? What you got on the ropes? Just keep them guessing. What guessing? They all think I did this. All right. All right, if you want, then I will. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your kindness and your patience. When I was wondering how on earth I could possibly come back here and face all of you, I was reminded of a, a terrible old cliche, really. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. <laughs> but I also reminded myself that I am among friends here. Not only my friends, but the friends of my dear father. And these are not people who would be stampeded easily by scurrilous rumors and baseless charges. Therefore, before we continue the program, I would like to make a statement. <clears throat> the letter that was surreptitiously placed in your programs is quite possibly a fraud. I have to qualify that statement because at this point I'm not really sure. Neither are we sure who placed the letter in the programs. And I make no accusations. However, when and if the truth can be ascertained, I promise you that I will be as public with this information as this person has been with his or her allegations. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate your understanding. And now it is my very great pleasure to introduce to you a man who was a lifelong friend of my father's, who has a record of distinguished service to not only to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, but to the entire nation as well. And I'm, I'm quite sure that you will agree with me. When I, I have to talk to you. Tina, what are you doing? Why are you wearing that? I'm sorry, Mister. I'm sorry. I come here. I forgot. I come here. Come. Oh, come. You did play, didn't you? 
And now you're not satisfied with that, but you want to come up here and parade yourself around up here on this stage? No, Gina, I won't allow that. Ladies and gentlemen, excuse me. I'm afraid I'm going to have to amend my earlier remarks. It's very clear to me now, the letter is in fact an out-and-out -out fraud. It is a monstrous defamation of my father's character. And this, this person that you see standing next to me right here is not, and I repeat not, she is not Victor Lord's daughter, nor is she my sister. She is simply an opportunistic, lying, self-seeking little... One life to live will continue in a moment. taking a cab home. At least I hope that's what you did. Yeah, well, Larry's out in the lobby. He's still looking for her. Now, he said he would go to Landfair with you because she needed to set it to me. I'm okay. glad to have him with me. feelings of humiliation and embarrassment. Didn't you know I'd be here? That I'd be ready to help you? Darling, I couldn't face it, not even with you. I still can't face it. The things that I did and said at the banquet. Slapping Dina. I've never done anything like that in my whole life. And I did it in front of everyone, in front of the most important people in this town, people who had gathered there to honor my father. I don't understand it. What's happened to me? Sweetheart. <laughs> this has been building up for a long time. Now something had to give. But it's probably for the best. Oh, how can you say that? I can't ever show my face in this town again. What are you talking about? Huh? All the guests were... were very... understanding. They... Understanding? To what? A confused, hysterical woman? Please, I can just see this when it hits the paper, the national intruder. Oh, that rag sheet. Forget about it. Oh. Honey, it'll all blow over. Will it? Yes. What do I do in the meantime? Who do I talk to? <laughs> Darling, look. I've been thinking that you're right. I have to go away someplace to sort all this out. 
Good. Name it. Where do you want to go? I want to go to the mountains. To the cabin. It's familiar, but it's far away, and I think it'll be good for me. You've got it. We'll leave first thing in the morning. No. What? No, I want to go alone. You're joking, honey. I mean, that's not a good idea, huh? It is a good idea. It's the only way. Sweetheart, I love you. I love you so much. But the one thing that I have not had one single solitary second of since this whole business with Tina began is any time for myself. And I need it. I have to try and make some sense out of all of this. I should be with you, honey. Darling, I know I have asked you to deal with everything for weeks now. And I'm going to ask you to do it one more time. One of us has to stay with the children. But maybe. Look, I'll be perfectly safe. It's very beautiful up there this time of year. It was my father's favorite place in the spring, and he and I spent so many happy times up there. Well, maybe you and I could spend some happy times up there. But this is not a very happy time for me. Hmm. You know, it seems to me that one of the things we promised each other when we got married was that we would uh, support each other in time of need. You know, uh, what was it, something about uh, for better or for worse? Do you I recall know. something like that? But I need to be alone. Please. Maybe just being in those very peaceful surroundings and in the shadow of my father, I can... I can find the strength that I need to cope with all of this. Strength I can't give you. I didn't say that. You might as well have. What you're saying is that you prefer... You prefer the spirit of a man, a man who has been dead for years, to the living flesh and blood of your husband. Oh, Clint. Clint, hell! Damn it, Becky! I am at the end of my rope. Now, I have tried for I don't know how long to understand what the hell is going on around here, what is best for you, Honey, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I know what's best for me right now. Please, I need a few days. Just a week. I need to take care of myself. And I promise you I will come back the same person that you've always loved. I can sure as hell go for that. And please, I beg you, let me go. Okay, but you've got to promise me that it won't be for very long. It won't be a promise. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to go upstairs, and I'm going to pack some things and go. Wait a minute. You're not, you're not going to leave tonight. Yes, I am. I can't stay to face people in the morning. I can't. I'll wake the children, and I'll kiss them. And I'll try and make them understand this. Probably a lot better than I understand any of it myself. You can't sleep either, huh? No, I'm worried about Vicky. It's awful foggy out there. What's Vicky got to do with the fog? Well, she's, she's driving up to the cabin. What, right now? Yes, right now. I'm going to give a call. Maybe she's arrived. Clint, after everything that's happened tonight, you would let her drive up there alone? Damn it, it wasn't my idea, Bo. You think I didn't try and talk her out of it? Well, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be yelling at you. I don't know. Heck, you ought to be yelling at somebody. What's, what uh, reason did she give for doing that? 
reason? What reason? Who knows what reason? She left because of embarrassment, because of not wanting to face anybody, I guess. And then, of course, there's her her wonderful memories of her father up there at the cabin. And... Oh, I doubt that. That would, uh, that would make a little too much sense. Clay, look, I, I know that she needs this time. She needs to be alone and everything. But if you're this worried... Um... Oh, I should just, uh, I should drive up there. Is that it? Well... I should just, uh, I should just go up there uninvited, unwanted. I should interfere with her, with her memories of her father. You know, she says she's going to pull herself together up there. <laughs> you want to know what I think? I think she's just going to convince herself that Victor Lord was a flawless man. Now, what, do you think he really wrote that letter, though? I doubted it at first, but uh, it's beginning to look that way. You know what that means, don't you? You know what that would mean? That would mean that Tina and Vicky were half-sisters. Yeah. yeah. And you know what that would mean? That would mean that Victor Lord seduced Tina's mother, Vicky's best friend, the summer she was here. I know, but to have that... And then she, can't, she can't deal with that, Bo. Vicky just cannot deal with it. She refuses to even consider it. Yeah, but can you imagine the whole town finding out the way they did tonight? Now is when she needs you. Yeah, you would think so, wouldn't you? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what, I'm starting to feel uh, a little hurt. And I'm starting to feel more than just a little bit helpless. And I'm beginning to feel just a whole bunch of anger. Ciao, Bo. Ciao. Oh, Mr. Buchanan, you're both still awake. So, what do you think? Do I look like an American punk teenager? Punk? I, uh... I'm having a hard time finding the words exactly to describe. Is this the way you plan on going to bed? Bed? Oh, no. I was going to meet my new friend, Annie. We never made it to the disco, remember? Remember? Bo, you, I was... Uh, I think I'll go in the study and call the sheriff up in Credence and ask him to include the cabin on his regular patrol. Good. Okay. That, yeah, that's a good idea. Right? Right. You're watching the Totally Outrageous Tina Lore Marathon. Stay tuned for another episode.